What's up guys? Uh, this is part three of our series, Awaken My Love, and uh, we're talking about relationships. And uh, we're using this, um, the book of, Song of Sol- Songs or Song of Solomon as sort of the backdrop as we talk about how to practically do relationships God's way. And the reason we're using this book is this book is called the Song of Songs or um, uh, the Song of Solomon. And the idea is that it's one of the greatest songs ever written according to the Old Testament songwriters. And it's all about romantic love. It's just a song. It's a love song, basically. Um, And it's kind of like a musical. We see different people singing different parts um, to really describe or show this relationship that's sort of happening between a guy and a girl. And uh, we're using that as the backdrop to talk about relationships because we need to understand that God cares about our relationships. This whole book in the Bible exists to show us that God cares about our love life, our romances. And so uh, we're trying to learn how to practically do relationships God's way. Um, So we're learning God's design and desire for our relationships. So we learned week one um, what we should be looking for in relationships. And then last week we talked about how to not awaken love. Um, and then when we are to awaken love. And that was sort of the primary theme of this series um, given from a verse in Song of Songs. Um, Today we're going to talk about the little things that can help and hurt our relationships, the little things that help and hurt our relationships. And this message will hopefully be um, helpful to you in order to have healthy relationships, because healthy relationships produce godly things. Um, So we're going to talk about those little things. Um, My message title, if you want to write this down, um, is It's the Little Things. It's the Little Things. Um, Song of Songs, chapter 2, verse 15, it says this, Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. I'm going to read it again. Catch us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Um, When Hannah and I were getting married, everyone uh, would give us sort of marriage counsel, especially people that had been married for a long period of time. Um, And it's funny, through different stages of life, people always are asking you questions or giving you advice. Um, Before Hannah and I got married, when we got serious about our relationship, the first question people would ask us was, um, when are you getting married? And then we got married and then people started asking us, when are you going to have kids? And um, usually that that progression continues once you have kids. It's, when are you going to have your next kid? And then when you have too many kids, people ask like, or say, when are you going to stop having kids? Um, But whenever you're in that sort of Uh, engagement or thinking about getting married, people have all sorts of advice um, that they want to give you. Uh, We heard awesome, awesome things, super lovely things like marriage is so hard and things like it's going to be the hardest year of your life. Um, And so that was like exciting to hear when you're 21 years old, um, planning to get married, people that have been married for a long time telling you just how difficult and miserable and hard it is. Um, We found, Hannah and I, our first year of marriage, because statistically people say that the first year of marriage is the hardest. Um, We found that marriage isn't hard, life is hard. Um, Life just gets difficult. Situations, circumstances, people, inconveniences, life is hard. Marriage is awesome, especially when you have a healthy, good relationship. Um, But one of the advice uh, that people gave us all the time, and it was funny, like no matter where people were at in the spectrum of their life or in their marriage, people would give us this advice and every person thought that they were like the first one to tell us this piece of advice. And their advice was, here it is, big piece of advice before you get married, don't go to bed angry. That was everyone was like, hey, bet my best advice I can give you. People wrote it on our cards. People like this was, this was it for people. Don't go to bed angry. Um, Now, I I just got to be honest with you. Um, Sometimes the best way to resolve a fight is to go to bed. And what I mean by that is um, sometimes you're just tired and a good solid nap would solve this problem. You know how you get hangry and like you just got, man, you just need something to eat. And so you'd stop being so in such a bad mood. Sometimes you're just tired and you need to go to sleep and then you can talk about things. But the point to this advice is you need to deal with things as they come up because if you wait too long, that little problem that you went to bed with, um, you'll wake up and it'll be a bigger problem. 
And that's sort of the idea of this verse that we're talking about, that there's little things that can come into a relationship that can really hurt your relationship, but it's also the little things in your relationship that can really help it. And so when the, when the author says, catch for us the little foxes that spoil the vines because our vines have tender grapes, the idea is our life is producing something, but there's little things, especially in relationships, that can compromise and that can corrupt what God is trying to do in that relationship. And so today I want to talk about some of those little foxes that can spoil our relationships and then how to catch them. The first point uh, is this, you got to catch the little foxes. Catch the little foxes. I want to give you a few practical things that can creep into a relationship that can cause serious damage. Now, again, my heart with this message is to just be helpful with relationships. So if you're in a relationship, you're thinking about a relationship, or or maybe one day you plan on being in a relationship, this is helpful, practical advice to help you do relationships well. And you need to understand that there are little things that can creep into your relationship that can cause serious damage. Number one is compromise. A little fox is compromise. By compromise, I mean um, making exceptions to God's standards. It's really easy to compromise in relationships, and it's easy to justify those compromises. Um, it, it, it's you, you compromise in a relationship, you do something like God's standards here, you lower his standard, you make it whatever you want to do, you compromise in some way or the other, and then you justify it. And we say things like, well, everyone else is doing it, Like, this is how they do relationships. This is how I see the person I follow on social media. This is how they behave with their significant other. Or this is how I see it in TV. Or this is what my friends are doing. Everyone else is doing it like that. And so we justify our compromise. Or or we say things like, it was only one time. What's the big deal? Like, I won't do it again. I, I, I know it was wrong, but it was just once. Or we say, it isn't hurting anybody. It's just me. I'm the only one affected. Or we say things like, It isn't technically forbidden or it isn't technically sin. Like those words of what we're doing isn't technically in the Bible. And we justify our compromise. And listen, little seeds of compromise can grow into really big wrong deeds. And those seeds of compromise in relationship, they usually start with something small. They start with a text. They start with a a playful conversation. They start with a a sort of um, a bad environment and all of a sudden pretty soon that train has left his station and you've gone from sort of dancing around the line to full-on compromise and then into a failure and so compromise is a little fox that can mess up a relationship second thing is jealousy jealousy leads to all sorts of problems Um, it creates resentment lack of trust dishonesty and oftentimes jealousy comes out of a misunderstood uh, out of misunderstood behaviors or intentions jealousy comes out of misunderstood behaviors or intentions a lot of times people don't intentionally try to make somebody else jealous like we've all seen that episode of the show where like boyfriend makes the girlfriend jealous so she decides to make him jealous by getting with her act whatever like it's rare that that is people's actual train of thought usually it's just misunderstood behaviors or intentions that causes jealousy um, in other people Let me tell you a few things that can cause jealousy in relationship. One, ignoring people, right? You you, uh, leave them on red all day long. You ignore people. No, let me just side note for a moment. Um, If you can't go five minutes without a text back, you're the problem. Like if if you're a person that um, you've sent them a text, 10 minutes have gone by, so you send 50 more texts, like you need to chill. You need to like take a walk, like, drink some water, relax, and wait like patiently for the text back. Um, Because you should be able to live, like if if your boyfriend or girlfriend's not texting you back within the first few minutes, like maybe their mom walked in the room and they're having a conversation. Or maybe they are, they got distracted watching a YouTube video or whatever it is. Like it's okay. But if you're the type of person that's intentionally ignoring somebody, that's a problem. Because that creates jealousy. And, and oftentimes, if, if we're doing it on purpose, it's because we want to create jealousy. Another thing is having too close of a friend of the opposite sex. 
You know, when you start dating somebody or if you get really serious and you marry somebody, there's certain behaviors and certain freedoms that you have when you're single that you don't have anymore once you start dating somebody. One of those things is, is just being super close with someone of the opposite sex. That's why you have that boyfriend or girlfriend. So if it's, it's not cool if you're texting some other guy super late at night or if you're hanging out with them alone um, and not hanging out with your significant other. There, there's certain things that sort of come off the table once you're in a relationship. And having a relationship like that on top of a, a romantic relationship can cause unnecessary jealousy. Another thing that causes jealousy is excluding people right? Just intentionally leaving people out. And that's beyond even romantic relationships. That's just friendships, right? We get jealous when we see our other friends hanging out and we're like, where's my invite? How come I didn't get that text? And so excluding people creates jealousy. And jealousy is something that can start small and grow into something really problematic. Um, Thirdly, selfishness. Um, Selfishness is basically viewing relationships simply for what you get out of it. When you only do what you want to do and never think about what they want to do. Even in little things like what you do over the weekend, whose friends you hang out with, where you spend your time and money. I think it's important that if you're in a dating relationship that there's some level of balance with who you hang out with. Sometimes we, like if it's the guy's friends and the girl has to just completely change her whole life and hang out with his friends. I think that there's, there, there should be a balance of, of how do you spend your time, and if it's only about what I get, you're very selfish in your motives for that relationship. But selfishness, again, is something that starts small. It could be little and insignificant. And then fourthly, I would say unforgiveness. Sort of not letting go of what has happened. Unforgiveness builds to bitterness and ultimately resentment, and so we must be quick to let things go. But when you hold on to things or you, you sort of dwell on things or you let things fester in your heart, um, that's when they build into bigger things. And so unforgiveness is releasing very quickly. One of the sort of the rules of relationships, especially when it comes with, to arguments, because you're going to argue, you're going to disagree, is you have to let the past be the past and only deal with what's happening right now. You'll see in relationships that when people argue and they get in a fight, they'll bring up something that happened like six months ago. Like, well, you did this like a year ago. And you're like, whoa, I thought we moved past that. But unforgiveness doesn't let things go. And unforgiveness can start small, like, man, they, they didn't respond or they left me out or they, they, they said this thing. And it starts small in your heart and then it builds into something that be, is a real problem. These are small things. These, are, these seem insignificant. Things like compromise, jealousy, selfishness, unforgiveness, but they can grow into something really big. So, The point was catch the little foxes. Those are the little foxes, and I'm sure we could talk about a lot more. Those are just some that will hopefully be helpful. So how do we catch those little foxes? Four quick things. Number one, to catch the fox of compromise, you gotta set up boundaries. To catch the little fox of compromise, you have to set up boundaries. Compromise happens when you neglect to set up boundaries. So you must lay out clear boundaries for your relationships in what you say and in what you do. Um, I was talking with somebody just recently and they were asking me practically what are some, ad- some uh, advice for boundaries. I gave them a couple. Um, one, do private time in public. Do private time in public. What I mean by that is when you're dating, you want to spend time alone together. Um, the best, time, best places to spend time alone that doesn't lead to compromise is in public settings. Go to the bowling alley, go to church, um, go to the beach, places that you're around other people even though you can be alone. When you do private time completely alone, completely in private, that's when compromise can happen. Um, I also said practically don't spend uh, too much time alone in a car, um, especially during the drop-off. Like if you're dropping somebody off, make it a point that our conversation is ending by the time we get to where we're going. Sometimes when you spend 15, 20 minutes, a half an hour sitting still in a car, especially at night, compromise happens. So set up boundaries. Say, hey, our conversation to end. When we pull in, it's time for you to get out and uh, we'll say good night and we'll talk tomorrow. Practical boundaries. So boundaries um, help catch the fox of compromise. Secondly, communication helps uh, the, the little fox of jealousy. 
One of the key principles to learn in relationships is communication. Like if you do any sort of premarital counseling or you ask somebody, hey, what's the best advice you can give me for my relationship? Communication is always at the top of the list. You need to talk about what you're thinking, why you're thinking it, what your intentions are. Because communication over communication, this is what's going on, this is how I feel, this is where we're at, helps in those relationships and especially it helps eliminate jealousy. Because jealousy usually happens when we wonder what's going on. What are they thinking? Why are they behaving that way? Why are they leaving me out? Things like that. So when you communicate, hey, this is what I'm thinking. This is why I'm leaving you out. This is what I'm doing. Um, That helps avoid jealousy. I would also say in line with that is to get outside, outside advice. Ask for help. Sometimes in relationships, we want to figure it out. We want to pretend like we're all grown up and we've got it together. Um, And the best thing you can do is ask for advice. I would even say if you've got um, a family that has a good relationship, if your parents are together and they seem like they have a good relationship, don't be afraid to ask them for advice. I know that sounds crazy and you're like, why would I ask my mom and dad? But um, I think it's helpful and it brings them into the conversation. It builds trust with them and for you. It helps relationship long term. Um, Thirdly, humility. To catch the little fox of selfishness, we gotta be humble. Um, Philippians chapter two, verse three says this, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. In other words, put other people's needs above your own. In order to eliminate selfishness, we've gotta be humble, elevate other people, bring other people to the forefront, lift them up, encourage them, uh, edify them, build them up, humble ourselves, put other people's needs and desires above our own. And then finally, um, patience. Patience. To catch the little fox of unforgiveness, um, we've got to be patient. I think one of the things that causes unforgiveness is lack of patience. Either we want people to apologize immediately for what they've done or we want them to be farther along or better than they are and we're impatient in their growing process. Can I tell you that every single person is on a journey? Everybody's growing, everybody's changing, everybody's hopefully maturing and sometimes we want our relationships to be farther along or we want them to feel a certain way or we want them to communicate better than they are and so we get impatient and that leads to unforgiveness and things like that. Patience, allowing people to grow and develop, allow God to do work in individuals. Let me tell you, if you build relationship around boundaries, communication, humility, and patience, you will be in great shape. I would say you would be in better shape than most people that do relationships. Look around in our world, those are not the four legs of relationships as we see it in our world. But if you could build your relationships on boundaries, communication, humility, and patience, you will have healthy, godly relationships. So we gotta catch the little foxes. There's all sorts of little foxes that come into our life, but we can catch them, we can deal with them when they're small. And if you deal with them when they're small, they won't grow into something big that can really harm us. The second point is this. And this is sort of the reason why we want to catch those little foxes. Point number two, it's because our vines have tender grapes. Now that's kind of funny language. And again, the Song of Songs is a poem. It's a song. It's a musical. And so um, it's not like straightforward. But the idea is for us to unpack and understand and apply to our relationships. And the reason that we want to catch little foxes is because God wants our lives and our relationships to produce fruit. When we talk about fruit, what we mean is characteristics in our life that are consistent with Christ. God is producing something in us. God is producing fruit, characteristics, qualities, intentions, responses that are consistent with the life and the heart of Jesus. And so God will use our circumstances, God will use church, God will use his spirit, but God will use relationships to produce the characteristics that he wants in our lives. And the relationships you have and how you behave in those relationships will either produce the things that God wants 
or keep those things from being produced in your life. They will either accelerate the process of your life producing godly characteristics or it will slow down the process or even worse, it will completely choke out and stop the process. So because your life is producing something and because God has something he wants your life to do and accomplish, we must guard ourselves and our relationships so they don't spoil what God wants to do. I can't tell you how many times I've seen somebody that's come to church, they're participating in youth, they're a part of group, they're doing everything, and all of a sudden, they show up one week with a boyfriend. And then it's like, they come one week, and then they come on and off, and then pretty soon, they disappear. And it's like, what happened? Well, they got involved in that relationship, and that relationship sidetracked them from what God was doing in their life. Relationships can really harm what God's doing or they can really help what God's doing. And God will use a relationship to produce what he wants us to produce. But you also need to know that the devil will use a relationship to produce what he wants out of it. So if he can get you to get involved in that relationship that will cause you to compromise or cause jealousy or cause dishonesty or cause unforgiveness or whatever it is, he will use that to keep you from what God has for you. So when we don't deal with the things when they're small, it will lead to big problems in our lives. But also, it can lead to small problems in our lives. Like jealousy and all of those things, like they can grow and grow and grow and become really poisonous. Um, but also, uh, there's little things that we allow into our lives that just make our relationships more difficult than they have to be. They make them just more intense and like less fun, more frustrating than they have to be. Um, let me just say this because I feel like this is something that's not stated enough in church and can cause a lot of confusion for people. If you're in relationships and it's only little foxes, what I mean by that is um, it's nothing but small problems all the time and all you do is fight, it's okay to break up. Um, like, let me just say it again. It's okay to break up if you're in a relationship. I think, now, let me clarify. I think our goal in relationships, wherever you're at in a relationship, ultimately is to marry somebody. It's to, to do things God's way, to walk with him, to trust him, and to do life with somebody. Um, and so I think that should be in the back of your mind wherever you're at in relationships. Um, but because of that thought, people feel bound and stuck in relationships that they shouldn't be involved in. Um, if you're not married, you could break up with somebody. Until once you're married, you can't break up with somebody. So let me say, it's better to break up with somebody and realize this ain't working before you get married um, until you, unless you get married and realize, uh-oh, I've made a huge mistake. And so breaking up with somebody is okay. Let me also say, don't blame God when you break up with that person. I've seen it happen a million times where they, some person goes up to somebody that, that they were really into each other and then the one person's not so into them anymore and they're like, hey, let, let's talk. Um, God just told me that I'm supposed to break up with you. <sighs> My thought on that is, I don't think God is gonna tell you to break up with somebody. I think probably what happened is God told you not to date that person and you ignored him. And now you're in a moment where you got to break up with that person. Um, and so blaming God only makes God look bad. Sometimes like people's hearts get ripped out over breakups and they blame God. And it's hard to not then blame God personally for your heartbreak. And so I would just say, if you're not having fun with somebody, if it's difficult, if it's always fighting, if you're not having, like if it's not just light and simple and, and you enjoy one another's company, it's okay to break up and just be like, I think we should break up. No, we don't need any even real explanation other than this just doesn't seem to be working. That's okay. Now, in closing, the point of this message is to help you have healthy relationships. There's little things, little compromise, little things that can get into our life that can ruin what God is doing in and through our life. And those things happen in relationships. And there's all sorts of little foxes that can get into our life. So we have to catch those little foxes. And the reason 
is because God wants you to have healthy relationships and healthy relationships produce godly things. So we have to catch the little foxes before they spoil what God is doing in and through your lives. Let me tell you, I tell you this every week, God has a plan for your life. God is doing something in your life. God is using you right where you're at. And we don't even say that God's gonna use you one day. God wants to use you today. And all of the things and all of the situations you find yourself in are opportunities for God to use you. So you don't want a bad relationship to get into your life and spoil what God is doing. You want to be the type of person that the people you surround yourself, the things that you're investing in, all of those things are only amplifying and accelerating what God is doing through your life and in your life. And so relationships designed by God, God set this whole thing up. God invented marriage. God put this book in the Bible. Like this is important to God. Who you spend your time with, who you spend your life with matters to God. And so surrounding yourself and being with the right people matters because that's going to produce in you and through you what God wants to produce. God wants you to have healthy relationships. Healthy relationships produce godly things. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you that you love us so much. And God, you care about every detail of our life. You care about who we're dating, who we're texting, who we're interested in. And God, you want us to be surrounded and involved in the people that are going to help what you are doing in our life and so that we might be people that help what you're doing in their life as well. So God, we love you. We ask that you would help us, to, uh, help us apply these things to our life. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Love you guys. We'll see you next week, Thursday night, seven o'clock.